Now we're talking about a concept in Chapter 6, and that's price elasticity of demand. There are a lot of different elasticity definitions in this chapter. Um, a bunch of demand elasticities like income, cross-substitution, and there's some price elasticities as well as the price elasticity for supply. This one, though, is just specifically about the price elasticity of demand, and I think you'll find, as you listen to this and then go back to your text and read, that a lot of the rest of them will make a little bit more sense. Okay. The definition of the price elasticity of demand is a ratio of two percentage changes. The percentage change in the quantity demanded of a good divided by the percentage change in price. Now, knowing the law of demand, as we do, we are going to expect this to be negative. That is, if the percentage change in price is positive, if price goes up, we would expect the percentage change in the quantity demanded to be negative. People would buy less, so that would be a negative number. We'll talk more about that in, in a minute. But that's all the elasticity is. The percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. It's a number that doesn't really have any kind of label associated with it. It's not inches, it's not pounds, it's not dollars. It's just a number that's this ratio of two reactions. What we really want to know about when we're asking about elasticity is a sense of responsiveness. If the price of a product changes, just how does the quantity that people want to buy, the quantity demanded, respond to this price change? We have a couple of different categories here, and they're really kind of easy to understand. If the number you get when you calculate this ratio is greater than 1, we say that it's an elastic demand or an elastic response. If the number turns out to be less than 1, we say that the response is inelastic or that demand is inelastic. For example, you could get a number greater than 1 if a 10% drop in price caused a 50% rise in quantity demanded. 50 divided by 10 is 5. We're going to be talking about the absolute value of elasticity. We're going to ignore effectively the negative number. And so 50 divided by 10, 5, that gives us an elastic demand. That's pretty responsive. A 10% drop in price causes a pretty big increase in the amount that people want to buy, a 50% rise. So that's elastic. Now, inelastic, on the opposite side of this, this continuum, might be seen by this kind of an example. Same 10% drop in price. Price goes down by 10%. But this time, the amount that people want to buy only rises by a smidgen. It only goes up by 2%. So 2 divided by 10 is 2 tenths, 0.2. That's less than 1. That's an inelastic demand. That also follows along with our idea of responsiveness here. If a 10% drop in price hardly causes the amount that people want to buy to change very much at all, just a 2% rise, that's pretty unresponsive. Now let's move over here for a little bit and talk uh, about elasticity of demand with respect to a couple more formulas and looking at a picture of a demand curve. Now I've written up here at the top the words, elast uh, the words absolute value, and that's just to remind us that as far as elasticity is concerned, for, for price elasticity of demand, we're going to ignore the negative sign. We're just going to worry about the numbers here. So you can ignore everything um, with respect to the sign. The second thing I want to point out here is that elasticity is not slope. And to see that, I've got a couple of demand curves drawn here. This one, we'll call that demand curve A, and this one, which we'll call demand curve B. And I've got a couple of uh, three points here drawn on here, point A and point B which are right across from each other to parallel demand curves. And you can imagine these being drawn at the exact same price. And then point A and C along the same demand curves. Now, although I'm not the best artist in the world, I am, I'm drawing on a uh, whiteboard instead of graph paper. Imagine that these two are straight lines, completely straight, and that they're parallel. Now, a couple of questions for you. Look at point A and point C. Do they have the same slope? Well, I'm hoping you're saying yes, because that's a straight line, right? And straight lines have the characteristics that the slope is the same all up and down along that line. That's the definition of the slope. You might remember it better as rise over run from maybe a long time ago. Well, the rise in this picture is delta P, change in price, and the run in this picture is delta Q, changing the amount that people want to buy. So yes, the slope is the same. But the elasticity is not. And one way to see that, perhaps, is by looking at the two definitions I've gotten up here on the board. 
That's the elasticity of demand repeated from the board you know, to my left here, and that's the slope. Notice a couple things. One, price is in the denominator here, it's in the numerator here. Uh, quantity is also reversed. But the bigger, more important thing is that the slope simply talks about the simple change. The price change might be from nine to ten dollars. Price change there would be one. Here though, it's percentage change, not simple change. And the percentage change is a fundamentally different animal. So in that case, the slope here is identical at point A and point C, but the percentage changes around these two variables, both in terms of price and in terms of quantity, would be very different. Okay? Slope and, and elasticity are two very different concepts. Likewise, point A and point B, even if these two curves are parallel, at point A and point B, we're going to see the same slope, but we're not going to have the same elasticity. Elasticity is percentage change, not simple change. Okay? So again, that's price elasticity of demand, and that's from Chapter 6 in the Micro-McConnell text.